need to take it very, very seriously. And the fact that we have seen Trump and what he's doing has implication. Now, having said this, I want to do two quick things. Try to talk a bit about figuring out federalism. It is again the backdrop of what I've said here that I want to say that what does it mean in Nigeria? What are the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities of trade? of our own brand of fiscal federalism and the intended and unintended consequences. We must also try to answer what are the reform options for transformation or reinventing of the fiscal federalism framework that we have in Nigeria. And I want to say the current clamor for fiscal federalism is not a new debate. In, our pro in trying to look at this, there are tons and tons and tons of works and researches that have been done. And like we said at the first session, the major challenge is the will to implement, the will to go the extra mile and act on what we have. To understand fiscal federalism, we must understand the concept of federalism. For there has been the bantering of the term federalism, because people call it true federalism. Now in, in our own, in Nigeria, here what we call true federalism. The reason why we talk about true federalism is that they look at the fact that the federalism we have is somehow not true. Different stakeholders have used it, and they have used that to define their own idea of what really a federalism should be like. But you know what? What is important is that there is no such thing like true federalism in the real world. There are principles of federalism that allows for nations to define their own unique brand of federalism. Hence, there is hardly any identical federalism anywhere in the world. Even when systems have been copied from elsewhere, Nations often domesticate federal systems to reflect the unique nature of their socio-cultural realities and specifically to look about their history and how they've gotten them first. So they've moved from pendulum. What is important, therefore, is that what is the degree of centralization and decentralization? From a centralized federal system, to the most decentralized. The distinguishing trait of a true federal system that forms the basis core is at least two tier of government made up of federal and state. And like I said, you can look at the example, the best examples you get around Canada and you get around Australia. Having said this, therefore, What is important is how do we have the right balance of power between the central and the federating units? The key arguments for the restructuring of Nigeria today has been inched on the fact that Nigeria has not operated a true federalism since it adopted a federal constitution. The fiscal responsibility and tax, taxing powers remain considerably centralized. The practice of fiscal federal Nigeria has been inhibited by several factors, which includes the dominance of the federal government in the revenue sharing, the protracted period of military rule in Nigeria, and the over-reliance on, the, on revenue from federating account. Nigeria obtained its, since Nigeria obtained its independence, Our federal system then was set up around regional autonomy. And by the assessment of many analysts, it provided for a more stable republic. The level of regional autonomy, which increased up to the time of independence in 1960, evolved to the point where regions had their own constitution alongside the federal constitution. This is what most commentators refer to 
as the pinnacle of all the Nigerian federal system. The military coup of 1966 destroyed this arrangement and replaced it with a unitary military system of government that was the antithesis of federalism. Even now, with a democratized, elect, democratically elected government in place at every level, certain vestiges of unitary system still plague the country's fiscal policy and operation. There is even an argument in some parts of the world that embedded in our current political economy is a formidable residue of the industrialized military concept that seeks to sustain the unitary system. Therefore, federalism can then be looked at as a system of government with inbuilt mechanism that allows the various component states, government or central, certain sphere of operation which are not necessarily mutually exclusive but which in the main assures them some specific powers in terms of legislation and control or adjudication over the matters. So close to that, therefore, we can define fiscal federalism as an integrated national fiscal relations system of revenue generation, allocation, and redistribution within a federal system that ensures the following, unity in diversity, based on the universal principle of what? Accommodation, correction of spills over effects, social safety net, and derivation. Now what that simply says therefore is that in federation unit, because of the endowment of the various regional makeup, it is possible that one part might be stronger than the other. But the whole framework should ensure, at the most, four key things. One, we must be able to accommodate each other. Secondly, where there are some areas that are not as strong as they should be, there must be allowances for transfer to enable the strengthening of those areas. We must provide social safety net for those that are weak, and we must look at the principles of derivation. Now, I want to quickly look at an aspect that tries to evaluate the Nigerian example, the Nigerian history with regards to how we have used these principles of derivation, how we have used this social safety net, how we have tended to accommodate all of us, how we have created some level of inclusion within the various federating units. Historically, you can look at the structure of Nigerian fiscal federalism from as far back as 1946 to date. A lot of work has been done. Some area, like I said, where regions were given some strength and some power, they, they, they used a lot of derivation and the impact of that we saw. And later on, when we began to whittle down derivation, especially as the military began to come in, and we began to use things like population and other factors as a basis of revenue allocation. But in all of this, key things that I need to bring forward therefore is that how have this affected the Nigerian Federation? Whether we have used derivation, whether we have used population, to what extent has it affected Nigerian environment? And I want to point out the following, that because of what we did through the military rule, military regime, the practice of true federalism has been under incessant problem. Through the creation of states, many states were being created. And what we then found out was that we had states that were created that were not only not feasible, that they became an over bloated structure of a fiscal structure. And many of those states were not financially viable and lacked financial capacity. The implication of these are following. They have created problems for Nigeria. And I want to be clear, I four problems. One, first, there was a question of how each level of government will, be ad will give adequate physical power, will be given adequate physical powers to enable them to maximize its revenue and discharge its constitutional duties and still preserve its 
physical autonomy. With the reduction of physical independence through the central administration of tax, because currently one of the challenges we have is that most of our taxes that are supposed to provide resources to each of these federated units are centrally coordinated. 